Hi, I'm Mike, and this is our Wyoming Life. Over the winter, our cows will eat about 400 tons of hay, and we usually count on feeding them for about 180 days. That's the worst case scenario, but when you're ranching, it's always best to plan for the worst case. 400 tons over 180 days, that's a little over two tons per day. Of course, winters start out light, so we might only feed a ton a day for a while and save as much as possible for the rougher part of the winter. But that's the weird thing about ranching. You are totally up to the mercy of the weather. From making the hay to feeding it, the hay game is in Mother Nature's hands. You might not have any hay to make or a reduced crop and then get hit with a hard winter. Or you may have hay coming out of your ears and have a really easy winter. You honestly never know. Unlike most jobs, your paycheck or even the ranch itself depends on the weather and how much hay you could make. Not many ranches can buy hay every year and ours is no exception. But like the old saying goes, it's got to be better next year. So with haying done for this year, we're going to count up our bales and start figuring out how much hay we need to buy and where we're going to be buying it from. But another pressing issue is gathering up the hay that we've already made and getting it to the hay yard. The hay yard is an area of the ranch where we store our hay until we need it this winter. And the first part of getting our hay stored is getting it out of the field. When we make bales with the baler, we tend to scatter them across the field. Whenever the baler is full, that's when you drop a bale. Sometimes it's in the most inconvenient spot. Sometimes you're on a hill and the bale pops out and chases you and the baler down the hill until you manage to get out of its way and it rolls for a quarter of a mile. Or sometimes you make a bale and drop it off, forgetting you are parked the other way on the hill. And again, it rolls away and you watch it go, hoping it doesn't hit the four-wheeler you have parked down there or roll through a fence. Sometimes it does. So my point is that the bales are scattered everywhere. And the first thing you need to do is gather them up and put them on a trailer and take them to the hay yard. This means driving across acres to get one bale and bring it back and then you do it again and again and again until your trailer is full. Moving hay can actually be pretty dangerous and deaths happen every year while doing it. Here we stay safe by making it a one man operation. The trailer is mounted to one tractor, another tractor is used to load the trailer and then you drive the trailer and the tractor to the hay yard where another tractor is waiting for you to unload. These bales weigh about 1500 pounds a piece and if one falls off the trailer and you happen to be standing under it, you're not going to have to worry about buying Christmas presents this year. Even inside the tractor, it can be a bit spooky. With the weight of the bale on the front of the tractor, it drastically changes the tractor's center of gravity and it's not unheard of for a tractor and its operator to flip all the way over with the weight towards the front like that, so you do have to be careful. Once the trailer's loaded, then it's down the road to the hay yard. We have multiple hay yards, mostly for insurance purposes because they don't want you to have your entire stock of winter feed in one spot, which makes sense. If there's a fire, you could lose tens of thousands of dollars of hay, but you would also lose the ability to feed your cows anything until you get that hay replaced. Today, we are unloading in our main hay yard, and unloading is much the opposite of loading, followed by stacking the hay. There are many ways to stack hay, and a lot of the ways that you stack hay depends on your climate. Most stack their hay end to end and go up like a pyramid. Some toadstool stack, placing a bale on its end and then putting other bales on top of it to keep a deer from eating your hay. Others wrap their hay to keep moisture completely out of the bale. However the hay is stacked, the main goal is to keep the moisture from penetrating the bales and causing spoilage. We stack with a base of three 
end to end to limit the amount of moisture that could enter the exposed end of the bale. It takes us a few days to bring all our bales up to the hay yard. Some of our hay fields are more than three to four miles away, and each trip can take a couple hours with loading and unloading. With each separate field's hay in the hay yard, it gives us a chance to get a sample of that hay as well, which we will send to the University of Wyoming, where they will test it for protein levels, minerals, and sugars. These numbers will help us decide what and any supplements that we're going to have to give the cows this winter when we're feeding the hay. Big round bales, that's the way we go, until they outlaw them at least. New studies have shown that when you feed round bales, cows aren't getting a square meal, and I've heard that can be an issue. With our hay count complete, we now start trucking in the hay that we're gonna need to fill up the rest of this hay yard. And it's a lot, about 14 truckloads. And hopefully, it starts arriving next week. That's it for moving hay, and I best get back to it. I hope you've enjoyed, and I ask you to subscribe, share, and feel free to comment. We answer all of our comments personally, and we always look forward to them. Check us out on Facebook, and also like us there for exclusive content that you can't find anywhere else. Thanks for watching, and as always, have a great week, and thanks for joining us in our Wyoming life.